hydrogen powered passenger vehicles set to burst onto the scene and possibly even replace battery electric vehicles in the next year or two? In this video, we will explore some of the very important changes that have happened with hydrogen and we'll listen to a number of industry insiders explain how the calculus for hydrogen powered industries have changed radically. I would say the last six months was basically a tipping point for hydrogen. And what's really changed is, is that it happened that fuel cells were trying to drag hydrogen forward. And going forward, it's actually hydrogen that's going to create a wave that's going to help bring fuel cells forward. What's changed is two things. Number one, hydrogen can now be produced at about 90% lower cost than what it did as recently as last year because of breakthroughs by companies like Calgary's Proton Technologies that produces the hydrogen while it's still in the ground, extracting it from old oil reservoirs, no new drilling required, no new exploration. They simply separate the hydrogen from the hydrocarbons while they're still in the oil reservoir. So all the carbon and other ugly stuff that's been in the ground for millions of years stays in there, which means we don't need to capture it. We don't need to pipe it. We don't need to store it. We don't need to figure out how to keep it down there. It's already down there. It stays down there. So ultra clean and ultra cheap. The second thing is, even if we want to produce hydrogen using the old technology of hydrolysis, which was an environmental nightmare because of the amount of electricity it consumed, we can now do it with excess electricity produced by green, solar, and wind. And that effectively makes hydrogen just a storage technology. It's always been driven by the light duty vehicle industry. And now other applications are actually showing how important they're going to be for the evolving energy system. And that will help pull along the light duty segment. The other thing that's changed is that Companies like Honda and Toyota have been very interested in hydrogen fuel cells almost exclusively be because they are compelled to build what the industry calls compliance vehicles, which are zero emission or near zero emission vehicles to meet California standards. But now that's changing. Take a listen to Linda Hassenfras, who is the CEO of Linamar, a massive $7 billion auto parts manufacturer with 61 plants globally and hear what they're doing with Ballard Power to produce a platform that allows the hydrogen power mechanics to fit in the same location as the batteries do in today's battery electric vehicles, which will make it a lot easier for auto manufacturers in the near future to offer hydrogen powered vehicles without requiring enormous R&D spending and design changes. To design something that's sort of plug and play in the sense that it can replace in the battery electric vehicle, the battery pack, with our fuel cell powertrain system. So, you know, a battery electric vehicle and a fuel cell electric vehicle are very similar. They both run off of an electric powertrain, of, you know, an e-axle, which is basically a gearbox, an electric motor and a controller. And in the battery electric vehicle, that is powered by the battery pack. And in a fuel cell uh, system, it electric vehicle is powered by the fuel cell itself. So, uh, you know, being able to sort of package it into, uh, you know, the, the dimensions that could just sort of fit exactly into where the battery pack is would make it easier for our customers to transition from battery electric vehicles to fuel cell electric vehicles. We'd like to interject for just a few seconds and ask you to click like, and if you like this type of thing, please click subscribe. Both of those things make a huge difference in the Google algorithm. We mostly talk about electric vehicles, the energy industry, and high technology. And we take on both sides of issues. We try to stick with facts. Thanks. Back to the show. Why go down this road of the hydrogen fuel cell? Well, we think that uh, hydrogen fuel cells are going to be a really important part of the future of mobility. Uh, I agree the battery electric vehicles have come uh, to the market uh, more quickly because that battery technology, you know, is there, it's ready, ready to go and be put in vehicles right now, whereas the fuel cell has been uh, developed over the past uh, several years to try to fit down into an envelope that would work really well for a passenger car. Uh, up till now, the fuel cell uh, technology has been more used in larger uh, vehicles which you know have a little more space for uh, for the actual system. Now the technology has been able to uh, been 
be brought down to the point where it can fit into a passenger uh, vehicle. And it's all connected and light duty doesn't go without heavy duty and um, industrial uses. But when all of them start to come forward and hydrogen starts to become readily available, one of the biggest challenges for light duty vehicles has been the infrastructure for hydrogen. And we understand better now that the infrastructure is going to exist. And once hydrogen's ubiquitous and um, lower cost, it will be much easier for the light duty vehicle segment to take advantage of that as well. So it's a really complex equation where a bunch of things are going forward. All right, so a lot has changed. More is changing in the very near future. But really, isn't battery electric really good? And if so, why would we bother to even have a secondary power platform? Let's hear what Linamar says. A few reasons actually why I think it's actually better uh, technology than battery electric. One is that it is truly zero emissions because the hydrogen fueled uh, mobility uh, is, is zero emissions from the fuel source right through to the operation of the vehicle because you can make that hydrogen from water using renewable energy. So you're almost running your vehicle on renewable energy, on wind power or solar power that is temporarily being stored in hydrogen because when the fuel cell runs, it comes back together with oxygen and makes water again. So it's sort of a temporary uh, storage. So it's truly green. I think that's the, the really important piece. Uh, they can be quickly refueled, which I think is really important, particularly for, for uh, commercial uh, vehicles. There's a, a high energy density of hydrogen. And I think also importantly, fuel cell electric vehicles don't rely on sort of regionally concentrated sources of certain minerals like cobalt, for instance, notably, or lithium, uh, which are largely controlled out of countries like the uh, Congo or China, which we fear may, may create issues down the road. Hydrogen generated electricity is still best used in heavy industry, but as you've heard, hydrogen is now set to move from just city bus experiments to big rigs and high utilization fleet vehicles like taxis and things used in shared mobility. But beyond those uses, hydrogen will also find a comfortable home in a smaller number of cities, states, and even some countries like Iceland and, you know, perhaps California, where real hydrogen fueling infrastructure is already well past the prototype scale. Hydrogen is now ultra cheap, ultra green, and it reduces Western society's dependence, you know, places like the United States, Canada, England, Germany, France. It reduces their dependence on unreliable and often adversarial governments like China and the Congo. You know, it's always a good idea to have at least two competing vendors and two competing technologies on critical systems like transportation. Battery electric and hydrogen electric are two easy solutions to the problem of making inexpensive and reliable electric vehicles. In the past hundred years, the option to power vehicles has largely been between gasoline and diesel. In the next hundred years, it's going to be between batteries and hydrogen.